In the last lesson, we described how to determine the VSEPR geometry of a molecule without its Lewis structure. Watch that video first if you have not seen it yet. This lesson will continue and show you how to determine the Lewis structure of a molecule easily. In the last lesson, we show you a trick which you can use to determine the number of lone pairs on the center atom. Take the total number of valence electrons Subtract from this the electrons needed to satisfy the octets on all the peripheral atoms. Divide the result by 2, and this should be the number of lone pairs on the center atom. Here we'll show you a second trick. This trick will allow you to predict the number of bonds you should have in the final Lewis structure of the molecule before you even start. Again, we'll use SO2 as an example. In the last lesson, we determined that there is one lone pair on the sulfur atom. We also know that there are two bonded electron domains, one for each physical connection between the sulfur and oxygen. But we do not yet know what kind of bond each one is. With the Lewis structure, we can figure that out. Here's the second trick. Take the total number of valence electrons, which for this molecule is 18. Subtract from this the electron needed to satisfy the octets on all atoms in the molecule. There are three atoms in SO2. Three octets require a total of 24 electrons. Divide the result by 2, and this should be the number of bonds in the final Lewis structure of the molecule. So there should be three bonds in the Lewis structure of SO2. The logic for this trick is simple. There is a certain number of valence electrons available in the whole molecule, but each atom requires an octet. If there aren't enough electrons, the deficiency is made up by bonds, and each bond takes two electrons. Notice that sometimes the center atom may undergo valence shell expansion and has more than an octet. In those cases, this trick will not work. The video solutions show several examples of this. To finish the Lewis structure, we start with a minimum of one bond between the sulfur and each oxygen, because every bond is at a minimum a single. That uses up two bonds. We must put the third bond on one of the oxygens. The center sulfur now has one lone pair and three bonds. That gives sulfur the eight electrons it needs. Out of the 18 valence electrons available, we still have 10. These will go on the peripheral atoms to satisfy their octets. The oxygen on the left has a double bond. It needs four more electrons for two lone pairs. And the oxygen on the right has a single bond. It needs six more electrons for three lone pairs. This molecule has another equivalent Lewis structure. We can put the double bond on the right instead, so SO2 has two resonance structures. Finally, to recap, you can predict the total number of bonds in the final Lewis structure of a molecule. Take the number of electrons needed to satisfy the octets on all atoms in the molecule. Subtract the valence electrons and divide by two. In the next lesson, we'll use both tricks to assign formal charges to all atoms in the Lewis structure.